Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. If I told y'all tonight how good it is to see y'all tonight. Amen. If, it, if it's nobody in this world has told you that they love you, we love you here at Grace Ministry. Amen. Y'all are a blessing to this ministry. Thank you. Thank you. We couldn't do it without y'all. First, without God, but he's got to have his people here to support That's and right. come out. Would y'all must do a little step off the side? I, you know, it's hard for me to come up here and not preach. It really is. So ain't no telling where I'm going to go with this. We'll have to get the preaching before it's over. But I wanted to make a commitment tonight because I know addiction is getting rampant in this world. Yes, it is. It's uh, recovering addicts. They're slipping and falling back like no other. Yes. It's been a hard time since COVID. You know, people didn't go to rehab, but the ones that was clean had all that time to sit at home and to, to get into a mess. You know what I mean? We all fall short of the glory of God, but we're going to slip up if we don't know our tools. We're going to slip up if we're not in God's will. Mm -hmm. If we're not in his word, we will slip up. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important tonight that we understand the step forward. And you have to make a searching, fearless, more inventory of your life. Amen. Well, how do you do that? Here's how you do it. First, we made a searching. You have to search. You have to see what the problem is. Mm -hmm. You have to see and identify what is causing you to keep going back out, keep going back to the bottle or going to the drug. What is that root cause in your life? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a thing? You need to figure out these things. But a lot of people talk about people, places, and things. But what about you? What about me? What about my character? Have I got character defects here today that, that I'm not working on? Am, am I the problem? Are you the problem? And maybe we're in denial. Is that what it is? That, that we say we don't have a problem or we don't use drugs, but we go out after the meeting and use? Or... Or do we blame it on our family? Did my family make me go out and drink? Or have I been clean for eight months and I blame it on my wife because we had an argument? Maybe I need to turn it around and look in the mirror and look at myself Amen. and do a personal, Amen. more Amen. inventory of yes. my life. That's right. See, we always busy doing this and this and pointing and blaming and, and being in that word denial. We, we try to blame everybody else in our life but ourselves. But and a lot of times, the problem is not anybody else, but it is ourselves. Right. You've got to go all the way back to your childhood. You've got to pull stuff up. You've got to get like a tooth, old wisdom tooth. That thing is hard to get out. And when that thing is hurting, it's killing you. But once you pop that thing out of your head, you are saying, thank you, God. I feel much better. That's the right. way it is with our recovery. We've got to dig deep. And sometimes we have to give our all to get that on the surface. And if we don't bring our problems to the surface, then our recovery is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. Because you haven't done a more inventory. You haven't searched God. You haven't searched yourself. You haven't looked at yourself to be the problem. And I'm not sitting here saying that we are the problem, but we contribute a lot to the problem. Amen. But it goes on to say, the purpose of step four, making a searching and fearless moral inventory of yourself. It is to begin to determine the root cause of one's drinking or drug use. And we talked about that. You've got to figure out what is causing you to go back to the drug. What is causing you to go back to the drink? Then you have to sit down and you have to take a piece of paper. And you need to write down the things that caused you to relapse. You need to put them in order. And every time you go in your life and you overcome that setback or that relapse, you've got stuff wrote down and you have been honest with yourself the things that it caused you to relapse. So now you have an inventory of your life. You're aware of what's causing you to uh, mess up, slip up, or go back out, however you want to say it. But we have to identify it, right? And we have to, when we identify it, you have to do away with it. You, you don't need to keep harping on the past. So what? We all in here, whether we own drugs or not, we've all made a mistake in our life from time. We, we, we've made mistakes that we're not proud of. 
And, and in our mind, we, we constantly bring them up because in my life, I've made comments when everything was going good. Oh, I could have had this if only if it wasn't for this. Why? It's not fair to me. Why did it happen to me? And we get in these little pity parties and we start living in our past. But what we need to do is do an inventory of what causes us to feel that way. What is causing us to constantly look backward? Why can't we look forward? Why can't we uh, just go in our life and change things and fix them and clean them up and, and get them out of our life? Why can't we just make a fearless decision to be able to go and repair our life? I look around in this world and the years that I have been doing this, not only does the addict get hurt, but his friends get hurt. Then you have the family that gets devastated because they see you change. They see you get a little better and they get so happy they can sleep at night. And then you come back and you go back out and your family is constantly worrying. They're constantly staying up at night. They don't know what to do to fix it. They are praying. They're calling other people, their family, and they're having fellowship with one another. They're praying at church, but they just can't figure out why their family mama keeps going back out. Mm -hmm. We need to look at this. Our family loves us no matter what they told you in your addiction. Amen. Your blood loves you deep down inside. It's somewhere where they still love you. But you've got to have the ambition today. You need to get out of that selfish ambition that you're in. You need to say, okay, today, I don't care what anybody says about me. I've done an inventory, and I've changed my ways. I'm working on my ways. I'm trying to find ways to forgive people that done wrong to me. I have called the people that I've done wrong to and asked for forgiveness from them. I have cleared my name. I took my junk out the trunk and I put it and aired it where everybody could see it. I've made myself accountable. So now it's time to get on the track of recovery. Now it's time to walk straight. Don't look back. Don't look sideways. But you keep looking straight. And when you look straight and you're walking to Jesus, then you ain't going to be worried about what's on the left or what's on the right or what's behind you because Jesus is in front of you. He has gone before you and made a beautiful road for you. Yes, sir. If you could only get that concept of how much Christ loves you yes. and what he has done for you yes. and, and how he wants you to walk that straight line yes. and give him good representative. Yes. Make him look good for your life. Amen. See, the worst thing we can do as a Christian is to, is to go out of this world. And I know I'm stepping out of boundaries here. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of what I'm talking about. But I want you to understand, a lot of us are too childish to come out of our old ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of us want help, but they ain't willing to put the help in that we need for ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right. A lot of us has had help, has had people give the shirt off of their back mm -hmm. and give them a place to live in a car or a job, and it still wasn't good enough. You still had to have a taste of that past in your life today. Mm -hmm. We want all these things. And we work so hard for them. And then we get back in this uh, uh, relapse state of mind. All the hard work that we have put in our recovery, all the trust that we have had built up in our friends, our family, or whoever it is in your life. And we throw it away. We throw it away so quick and we find ourselves worse off than we were last year. Mm -hmm. And it gets harder and harder and harder every time you relapse to come back. It's hard enough to relapse one time and come back. But when you constantly relapse and relapse and relapse, you're getting too comfortable with your old ways and you're That's not right. doing anything That's about right. it. That's right. That's true. But we need to identify any weakness that we may have that contributes to the drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. We've got to identify those problems. Is it that you are weak when you have money in your pocket? Is it that you are weak when you get a car and you're not used to that freedom? Did you take advantage of that freedom? Does that car go places that you won't go on when you won't drive it? Are you going to neighborhoods that you know is not good for your uh, recovery? Are you having people get into that car and ride with you that you know that it's not good for you in your life? See, I want to tell you today not to be... Uh, ugly about it, but I'm just saying in the world that we live in today, 
And, and as bad as addiction is today, and if we're here tonight and we say that we're in recovery, we need to make sure that we are in recovery. Amen. We need Amen. to treat our lives like it's important. Well, that's right. Let me tell you all something. There's a lot of people out here that probably will try to bet to see who's going to get high first mm -hmm. or who's going to relapse first. Mm -hmm. But you can't worry about those people. This is your recovery. This is not your family's recovery. You are doing this because you want a better life. That you have gotten sick and tired of being sick of addiction. That you're ready to make a change in your life. And that you're ready to show this world that you can be the person that you need to be in recovery. That's right. But I want to tell you here today, it starts with you and I. It starts with your commitment. First, you have to admit today that you are powerless over your life. Amen. And if you admit that you are powerless over your life, you won't have the unmanaging part coming in because you are admitting that you are a problem, mm -hmm. that you are the piece of the puzzle, piece and up. you need to put that puzzle back together piece so up. you can live a sustainable life here tonight. Yes, yes. And understand personal strength. Everybody in here has got a will to live. I look at former drug addicts and stuff, some of the toughest people that you will ever be around. An alcoholic, toughest person that you will ever be around. But see, the world's going to tell you that they're the weakest person. Because they see them falling, they see them destroying their life, and all they see is disaster, disaster, disaster. But me, but me, I look back, you got to be strong in that, that game of addiction. It, it, it tears your mind up, it tears your life up, it tells you to do stuff that you promised that you would never do. It takes you to a level in your life where you see yourself doing stuff that will give most people a nightmare. It's stuff that you dream that would never happen to you, and you find yourself in the middle and doing those things. It's because that we haven't been honest with ourselves. We haven't made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. If anybody wants to change tonight, you've got to put the footwork in. Yes. Yes. These meetings will not do you any good if you come in here, sit down, and have a deaf ear and not go work on these tools and these principles and the steps. Amen? Amen? And I know I got out of the steps a little bit. I'm trying to get back in them a little bit. But I just I just know in my heart that God is step one. Amen? Amen? Amen. God's grace that he saw me, he saw you, he saw this world, one that didn't deserve to be saved, but his favor was on us. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come, take a form of man to walk this earth and then go to the cross of Calvary and give his life as a sacrifice for you and me. And I think about how important it is about telling people about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the first priority in my life. My wife will tell you, I love my wife, but Jesus comes first. Amen. Amen. Then it's my wife and my household and my work and whatever else comes along with my life. Jesus Christ has got to be first in your life and everything you do because he is your cornerstone. Amen. Amen. Without the cornerstone, you have nothing. nothing. You can search and you can fight and, and use all the money, all the power in the world. You will never find happiness until you make Jesus Christ your cornerstone. Amen. That's the only happiness. You can think, you can search for drugs to give you a peace and a happiness. And, and what it is, Satan has set you up today to destroy your life. Mm -hmm. He is trying to get you in a mode to make you think that you are worthless. Maybe he's telling somebody here tonight that God doesn't even love you, but that's a lie from the enemy Satan. Amen. That is a pure lie, amen. God loves every soul in here tonight, amen. amen. God wants you to stand up here tonight and call upon his name and ask him to come in your heart and save you. That's what God wants you to do here tonight. God doesn't want us talking to our friends and saying, well, I ain't going to never make it tonight. I'm going to go out next week and I'm going to fall short. I'm not going to do like I want. I guarantee you I'm going to fail. How can you ever stay clean if you got an attitude of failing? When you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you don't have to fall no more. He is picking you up when you fall. There's no need to lay down on that ground no more and cry because he's picking you up off that ground. See, we make too many excuses here today. We give Satan too many uh, credits here today. 
We live our life and live it like we want to live, and we cry when things don't go right, but why don't they go right? We had a conscious decision to do right, but we chose to do wrong. Uh -huh. We need to understand tonight that, that if you haven't made a moral, uh, spiritual inventory of your heart and found where you sit with your Lord, amen, that nothing's going to work out. Nothing's going to go right. I want you to know here tonight that every soul here has a chance to be free tonight. Do you want that chance? Amen. It's just as simple as calling on the name of Jesus, yes. asking Jesus to come in your heart to save you and deliver you from the alcohol amen. and drugs, and he creates you a new creation, amen. amen? He gives you a new life. You're no longer that drug addict, amen? amen. You're no longer that drunk, so quit telling yourself that you were drunk. Amen. Quit telling yourself that you are that addict. You're not the addict. You're not a drunk. If you have called on the name of Jesus Christ and you are truly saved here today, you are a child of God. Amen. A child of God. Amen. Amen. You don't have to keep rolling that rug out to the devil. You don't have to keep rolling that rug out to your old past. Jesus Christ has changed all our past. That's right. Quit looking back at your past. Quit, quit depending on your own strength. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling y'all, if I could sit here and tell you how many things God has done, we'll be here at 12, 1 o'clock. I don't have a perfect life, I want you to tell. I want you to know that tonight. Amen. I fight battles like everybody else, and Satan has really been tearing me up here lately, amen? amen. Through my mom being sick and everything else going on, but I'm here to tell you today, I haven't bowed down to Satan. I have put my trust into God, and God has brought me through this. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. If yes, you would only just have that faith, have that belief that when you call upon the name of the Lord, that he will come through for you. How many people tonight, when you have a problem come upon you, that you don't even go right to God before you have the problem? You pick up the phone and you call your family member, your friends, and say, Lord of mercy, do you know what happened to me today? Let me tell you what happened to me. And then we go to God and put him on the back burner like he's a spare tire in a trunk. We need to learn to use God every second of the day. We need to learn to praise God when we're going through the worst storm of our life. That's why I have found God the strongest in my life at the weakest part of my life. Mm -hmm. The weakest part of my life. When I got everything going good for me, I get a little comfortable and I say, God, I didn't pray to you today, but everything is going perfect. Next day go by, everything is going good. And I said, well, I forgot to pray today. Third day come up, everything breaks down. Everything comes against me. My life is turned upside down. Mm -hmm. See, that makes me know right there that my God wants me to pray for him every second, every day, through the good, through the bad. He wants us to praise him through the worst part of our life. That's right. Let's get on through this right here. Your inventory is a list of your resentments, fears, guilt, hate, and hang-ups. Y'all hear that good? Resentment, fears, guilt, hate, and hang-ups. All our addictions going to have all that in it. You remember that part where you had to have a searching, fearless, moral inventory yourself? Well, this is what you got to inventory of what's in your life. What are you resenting in your life? Have you, have you really gone to God and say, God, I lost this right here. I know I'll never get it back. But God, if it's your will, can I have it back? Don't sit there and just and keep that built up in your chest. See, the more stuff, the more resentment, the more fear, the more guilt, the more hate, and all the hang-ups that you keep buried here, it's got to come out sometime or another. These human minds and these human hearts, they ain't made to hold that all the time. We're going to bust sometime or another. So it's best that you do an inventory of your life and get rid of these things now before they come back to haunt you later. A moral inventory is a written object, assessment of your life, including character, defects, and strength, and weakness. And look at the damage that hit drugs has caused you in your life. What has addiction taken away from you today? What, it, uh, what has addiction cost your family? 
And there's a lot of people here today that can't answer that. Amen. Sadly to say, with the fentanyl and all the stuff that we got going on in our streets, people are dropping. People are dying because they didn't know what they had. And a lot of times, we do know what we had, but we take it anyway. We go after it anyway, knowing the power that that drug has, that it could kill us at any second, but we still are willing to go get it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody else, the, the drug lords, all of them knows that. That's why they're pumping it out here on the street, That's because right. they know people can't say no to what's good. That's right. They know that, that addicts and stuff are going to go get what's the best. And, and, and I hate it. I wish it was something I could do today to just snap my fingers and make it go away. Y'all wouldn't believe in the 11 years that I've been doing this, the things that I've seen, the, the families that I've seen hurt, the devastation of what drugs has done to the children and all above. It's, it's just wiping us out. It's like, a, it's like a surge coming in, and it's just blowing through people's homes. I'm talking about you ain't got to be poor to become an addict. You ain't got to be, you, you can be poor, you can be middle class, you can be rich, you can be 80, you can be 90, you can be 10 years old. It does not have any restriction on who it gets. Amen? Amen. If we do anything tonight, first we need to thank God that he saved our lives. Second, we need to use these bodies that God has given and use our mouth and our testimonies to go out and flood these streets and tell other alcoholics and addicts that it is hope through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only hope we'll ever have. I thank God for the meetings. I thank God for NA and AA. But I am a Jesus man because he has died. He has paid a price for me. And I know that he's the reason that I'm clean here today. Right. Amen. Amen. I've been through the program. I've been through them, the 90 90 and on and on and on. I've been through them. But God has called me to preach the word of God, and I know God saved my life. Amen. He brought me out of addiction just so I could be used to help somebody else's life. That's right. That's right. And you, God can use you today the same way. That's right. When you get on fire for God and you see God give you that fire, amen, that all you want to do is talk to people and tell people about Christ and what Christ has done in your life, you're going to feel better than you ever felt in your life. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Pastor. Amen. Yes, sir. This step, although, although it's difficult, it is an important part of achieving long-term sobriety. Amen? Y'all believe in that? Yes. What is the purpose of step four? It is to begin to become one to move forward in recovery by honestly examining your past substance abuse and actions, and how it has affected you and others. You have to be honest here. Amen? Right. If you're not honest here, you're not going forward. And if you do go forward, you're going to fall backwards. Yeah. You've got to be honest about yourself. If you're weak here tonight and you keep falling, be honest with yourself. Say, I can't do it on my own. Right. I need help here tonight. I need somebody to believe in me tonight. Yeah. Somebody to call me tonight and check on me. Yeah. God, give me the strength to overcome this. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something. We move miles away from God, but God never leaves us. He's always here. It's us that walk away from God. That's right, it's us That's that right. takes a chance and makes the conscious decision to go use here tonight, uh -huh. to go drink tomorrow. That's true. We make that decision. That's true. And we know it's wrong, but we still do it. And when we get caught doing it, we blame everybody in the world but ourselves. I know when I was getting high, I didn't need nobody to tell me what I needed to do and what I couldn't do. I already knew that, but I chose not to do the things that I need to do because I cared more, more about getting high than I did my wife at home. I cared more about getting high than losing my house. I cared more about everything and nothing. Amen. My life was out of control. I cared for nothing. I didn't love myself. I let myself go to nothing. I, I, I sit there and watch my wife window down to where she didn't even look happy no more. I remember days I would walk in the house and it, she didn't even have an outlook on her face. She didn't know what to do. She had this stare look on her face every day like she wanted to just bust out crying. 
And I found out in life what I have done to hurt my wife, and it's nothing that I could ever do to, to take away that pain. It's nothing that you can ever do to take away the pain that you cause. But if you just trust in the Lord, amen, if you just trust and go to Him and say, change me here tonight, change my heart, change my character defect, change my way so, so I can be better for my family. Your family will forgive you, but first you have to make a conscious decision to get clean and to love your family, to be a better husband, a person in society, to want to change your life and do what's right. This is the last piece, and I'm going to take us to the scripture. What are the four-step promises? We have begun to learn tolerance, patience, and goodwill towards men, even our enemies, for we look on them and forgive them. Whoever has hurt you in this world, you need to make things right. You need to, if you can't talk to this person or people, might be a family member here tonight that has hurt you bad, but maybe you have hurt them as well. Maybe if you can't go talk to that person, at least send them a letter telling them, for, ask for forgiveness. The hardest thing to do in this world is to, to break down and admit that we're wrong. But I truly believe the only way you can be happy in life is you have to admit you're wrong and move on from it. If the person don't write you back or that person won't take your call, you try it. Amen. You try it. But first, if nobody will listen, always go to God first and ask for forgiveness. And if that person don't ever call you back, then you've done what you had to do. So you can wipe that off your list and that's gone. It's a lot of people that will never forgive you. I'll tell you that now. They'll have a cold heart towards you the rest of your life. But if you try to reach out to them and if you tried everything and you've done that personal inventory and you found out the problem and you have tried to make that problem right, then that's all you can do. Amen. At least you have made that step to carry out your problems or your character defects. Here's some character defects. Anger and hatred. Selfishness and self centeredness Being dishonest and lying regularly. Defensiveness. Constantly, constantly playing the victim. Blaming self and others. Closed-minded. In other words, you don't shut your mind down and you don't want to hear nothing and you ain't never did nothing. So I want y'all to think about those few things and I've got, I got a bunch of this part two I'm going to do next week, but I want to take time and have time to go to these two scriptures right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do part two on doing a more inventory of our lives next week. That way y'all can tell everybody, say, look, man, we're going to be talking about a personal inventory. You need to come out here that night. Amen. You don't want to know when I was in my recovery, well, when I was in my full-blown addiction, that was one thing that I could never do is to say I was wrong. Hmm. Because I didn't want to do what was right because I didn't want to give up the drug to do right. Y'all, anybody had that problem here in your past? That drug had you so hard that you were scared if you made a change that you wouldn't be happy no more? Mm -hmm. That's the devil lying to us, y'all. Let's go here to Matthew 7, 12. And the reason I picked Matthew 7, 12, I take it back. The Holy Spirit gave me this verse right here. It's because we have to understand today, if we are starting our recovery, we need to understand that how we treat people is how we want people to treat us. If we treat people with respect and love, then, then they should tr uh, turn around and treat you with love and respect. But if you're not doing that and you're still treating people bad, if you still haven't done a more inventory of your life, then maybe you need to take an inventory of this scripture right here. I pray that the scripture will text somebody. I pray that everybody in here don't have a problem with that. But if it does, I pray that God will touch your heart with this. And this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the uh, prophet. I mean, the prophets, yeah. 
Y'all understand what it's talking about right here? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, amen? You want people to respect you and love you, right? You want people to honor you, listen to you when you talk, to enjoy fellowshipping with you. But surely you don't want nobody coming up and cursing you out or making you feel like you're nothing or you come from nothing. See, we need to pe we treat people like we want people to treat us, and that's the truth here tonight. Let's go to Genesis. How many has had a problem tonight when you find yourself in your addiction or maybe you're in recovery and, and, and maybe you did slip up, but somebody come and say, I know what you did yesterday. You don't have to lie to me. And the first thing you do is blame everybody around you. Amen. You blame the, the family. You bring, bring the person that was in the grocery line in front of you. You blame everybody but yourself. Listen to this. This is coming out of Genesis 3, 11, and 12, and 13. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat. Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. Amen? Here Adam couldn't even take responsibility knowing God could see what done happened. But Adam wouldn't even take responsibility. He said, No, it's your fault, God, because you gave me this woman. Then he turns around and blames the woman, and then he says, I ate. So you see where I'm going with this of making sure you do a personal inventory of your life? You see how important it is tonight to admit that you're wrong and to ask for forgiveness and admit that you need help here tonight? That's what it's all about is learning. Don't be like Adam and blame everybody else. But you get to the root cause of that problem. You fix that problem. You give your heart to God. You let him change your life, and you do what you got to in life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go to a word in prayer so we can have group. Yes. Dear Heavenly and Most Gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you here tonight. We praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for everybody that come in tonight. And, Lord, we just, it's so good to see everybody. And, Lord, I pray that you will put a hedge of, of protection around all of our lives as we leave this church here tonight. Lord, if there's somebody here that, that just does not know you, or maybe it's somebody, Lord, that just feels like they're not, they don't deserve uh, happiness or they don't deserve salvation, Lord, I pray right now that you will come in somebody's heart and, Lord, just convict that heart as only you can do. Lord, we just thank you for the wonderful souls that you have here tonight. We thank you for the glorious uh, blessings that you have given all of us here tonight. And, Lord, we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So the women will meet. Y'all might have to meet out here tonight. Hey, Bernard. Yes, sir. How many? Them women ain't going to fit back there, are they? No. No, they ain't going to fit back there, Pastor. May have them on. Um, Hey, Shannon, are you going to have enough room back there? Y'all have to sit back there. Yeah, probably better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. 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 Oh, thank you.